On June 27, 1966, audiences for the first time saw the gloomy and great house of Calmwood. They saw the matriarch, Elizabeth Collins Stoddard, looking out the window, and her cad brother Roger pouring himself a brandy. A watch pot never boils, the coin of phrase. Don't you think you ought to look in on your son? The little monster's asleep and I'm delighted. And I choose my words with infinite precision. Despite what many think, Louis Edmonds was not English. He was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and not dissimilar to Roger. His family home was a two-century-old mansion known as Longwood. He studied acting at Carnegie Tech, where he was guided into becoming a classical actor, perfect for Shakespeare, Chekhov, and Shaw. During World War II, he left school and joined the Navy, because in his words, he loved the costume. His acting career had its ups and downs, and by the mid-60s, he was thinking about quitting. Then he got a call from Dan Curtis to be on a gothic soap opera called Dark Shadows. His character, Roger Collins, had killed someone in a drunk driving accident and framed Burke Dublin for it. Now, he has blown through his share of the family inheritance and has moved back in with his older sister at Collinwood. Originally, Roger was going to get his comeuppance and go to prison. But just like what would happen with Barnabas, he was so popular with fans, he became a permanent member of the cast. In fact, him and Joan Bennett were the only two actors to appear in both the first and last episode of Dark Shadows. Overall, he appeared in 322 episodes and played a total of eight different characters. But please join me for a brandy as we take a look at the top five episodes that spotlight his most famous role, Roger Collins. Roger, can't you ever think of anything but yourself? Well, darling, when you get right down to it, what else is there? Number 5, Episode 2. On top of Widow's Hill, the governess Victoria Winters meets Roger Collins. And much to his shock and horror, she mentions that Burke Devlin has come to town. Roger Collins was the first Dark Shadows villain, and just like they would later do with Barnabas, they slowly introduce him to build suspense. In the first episode, we had that one scene of him drinking hard in the drawing room. And in this one, first we just hear him violently slamming the doors to Collinwood. And then we see him standing behind Vicky on top of Widow's Hill. The early episodes actually included some on-location footage. We see Vicky walking around the Seaview Terrace, which they used for the exterior shots of Collinwood. She seems so small and fragile in comparison to the Great House. And then we see this iconic shot of Roger standing behind her on top of Widow's Hill. In a couple of episodes, Carolyn will joke that at the stroke of midnight her Uncle Roger turns into Dracula, and that's who he looks like. Regal, powerful, and gloomy. And you get the impression that at any moment he might push her off. Not planning to jump by you. You wouldn't be the first you know. I'm Roger Collins, brother of Elizabeth, father of David, and terribly sorry if I startled you. We're quite a strange crew, Miss Winters. Strange, but I think you'll find most of us rather nice. If you intend to have a picnic with my son, do yourself a favor and stay away from the edge. No one can make hating your son as funny as Louis Edmonds. He knows how to be charming, but there's also this coldness. And when Vicky mentions his name, Burke Devlin, he starts shaking her. And again, you think he's going to throw her off. He's only in this scene, but just like Barnabas turning towards his portrait, it's unforgettable and adds to the mystery of who is this haunted man named Roger Collins. Number 4, Episode 313. Roger's son David is missing, so Roger and Joe Haskell search at Eagle Hill Cemetery and go inside the family mausoleum. While Roger's murderous side was mellowed out, his sarcasm always remained. He thinks it's preposterous that they're looking for David in the cemetery, and it is one condescending remark after the other. Look, you heard what he said. He said he heard voices from inside there. He said he heard the voices of the dead. Obviously, the man is mad. Well, maybe so, but he still could have heard something. 
Of course he did. He heard the pearl-shaped tones of a spook saying boo. Louis Edmonds had a brilliant sense of humor and brilliant comic timing. And a few times, Nancy Barrett and Alexander Mulkey had to turn their backs to the camera because they couldn't stop laughing. Most of the laughs come from the strong acting and the strong writing. But not all. Like other soaps from this era, Dark Shadows was filmed on a process called Live on Tape, where you film straight through like a live show. No retakes, no post-editing, but then it's broadcast later. And with five shows a week, sometimes the actors make mistakes, it's just how it is. And when they're in the family mausoleum, Big Lou makes a whopper. Oh wait a minute, several of my ancestors, ancestors, my ancestors were buried here. From what I gather, no one's been here in about a century, I'd like to have a look around. This is the most famous blooper of the show. It's hysterical, but what's amazing to me is how well he handles it. Without missing a beat, he quickly incorporates it into the dialogue, so that it looks like Roger made the mistake and not Louis Edmonds. That's the magic of a great theater actor. Things might go wrong, but they never break the illusion. Number 3, Episode 182. Dr. Guthrie and Victoria Winters know that Roger's wife Laura is a phoenix, and that she wants her and David to burn to death. Roger doesn't want to believe it, but when David tells him that he saw a vision of himself in fire, and that he wants to go away with his mother, Roger can't get Guthrie's evidence out of his mind. When it comes to the supernatural, Roger is typically the skeptic. So when he does have a face-to-face -face encounter with it, it is powerful and really spooky. Roger thinks David is a little monster, and he's concerned that Laura might testify against him, so he can't wait for them to leave. I'll think of David often. I'll remember him fondly, from a distance. Despite his research and evidence, Roger doesn't even bother to look at Guthrie's reports. And you're going to have to hear what I'm going to say. I have, and my interest has continued to diminish in direct ratio to your credibility. However, when David tells him everything, in Roger's head he may be still going, this is preposterous, it's impossible, but in his heart he's getting scared. His father and son, they don't understand each other, but Roger still loves him, and he's awkward about it because he doesn't know how, but he even tries to bond with David in this scene to try to get him to want to stay at Collinwood. Just comes as a shock that you want to go away with your mother. After all, we've spent quite a lot of time together. Torn between his logic and his feelings, Roger wants to escape reality and goes for the brandy. But he smells Jasmine, the scent of the ghost of Josette, and sees Dr. Guthrie's book of newspaper clippings open on their own. Vicky! 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 This report about the woman who died in the fire. There's one thing Dr. Guthrie neglected to tell me. This boy, this David, he burned alive. He didn't want to be saved. He wanted to burn in his mother's arms. In the flames. He wanted to. He wanted to. Roger is terrified by something he does not understand but he has seen it with his own eyes and can no longer deny it. Not only is this a very spooky episode, but it allows Louis Edmonds to dive deep into the vulnerability and heart of Roger Collins. By the way, off screen, Louis Edmonds and David Hennessy were actually very close. David Hennessy became a restaurateur, and Louis would go to his restaurants and tell everyone that he was his father. David never denied it. Number two, episode 88. While locked in a room in the closed-off East Wing, Victoria Winters saw the ghost of Bill Malloy dripping with wet seaweed. Without telling anyone, Roger and Elizabeth go to that room to investigate. One of the strongest relationships with the show was between Roger Collins and his older sister, Elizabeth Collins Stoddard. Joan Bennett had been a huge movie star, and Louie was thrilled to work with her. But she was used to movies where you could do retakes. So he would go over to her house, or sometimes she would go to his. They'd practice their lines. Then after a little while, they'd roll out the cocktail tray. They'd tell stories about their lives and just have a ball. And they really became like brother and sister. And you feel their bond. In the first episode, we heard rumors that Collinwood was a haunted house. Now Vicky has seen a ghost. 
In front of anyone else, Roger and Elizabeth would never admit it. But behind the closed doors of the drawing room, Elizabeth asked her brother a question that is understood to stay between them. It's not just idle curiosity. I'm really worried. As long as you've lived in this house, even when you were a child, have you ever seen anything you could actually call a ghost? I'm not sure. I've seen and felt things. Things I can't likely explain. Something I don't know what. You can't tell me it hasn't happened to you because I know better. You said there was a way that we could satisfy our curiosity. What were you going to suggest? I think we should go to the closed off section of the house and go back to that room and see if there's any evidence of what Vicky claimed to have seen. Roger looks shocked like he's about to deny it. But this is Liz, so he tells the truth. And Liz looks away like she doesn't want to acknowledge it. But this is Roger, so she can't deny it. While the show would go back in time, they never explored the young Roger and Elizabeth. But these lines inspire the imagination. And you can just picture a 16-year-old Liz screaming that she saw a ghost. This is utter nonsense. When I found her, she was babbling. I saw nothing to substantiate what she claimed to have seen. In the room in the East Wing, Roger continues to refute the possibility. But Liz, who's always more willing to face reality, finds the seaweed. It knows that Vicky was right. Regardless, she burns it in the fireplace. In honor of Colin's family pride, the topic remains closed. Another secret of the Great House of Collinwood. Number 1, Episode 280. Barnabas throws a costume party at the old house, where everyone dresses up as a Collins family ancestor. Liz feels a strange chill and says it feels like someone touched her, so Roger suggests that they have a seance. Because of the show's budget, they were normally limited to only five actors per episode, but this one has seven, so it was considered a big deal. Now David's not here because the party's too late. But the rest of that classic Collins family from the early days of the show are all here. It's a treat to see them all act together, and it really feels like a family party. The party is set in the old house, which has recently been restored and is lit by candlelight. Instead of their signature brandy, they have claret cup punch. And while they all look great, being classical actors, Louis Edmonds and Jonathan Frid look like they were born to wear these 18th century costumes, and they make that grandiose spirit of the past come alive. The accuracy of the restoration of this room is uncanny. I almost feel as though I've stepped into the past. On oh, that candlelight, it lends a marvelous atmosphere. Like the Kansas scenes in The Wizard of Oz, this episode sets up who will be who when they go back to 1795. We learn that Roger looks like Joshua Collins, and Liz looks like Naomi, and Louie's old world aura helps get you ready to suspend your disbelief. Along with exemplifying the theme of the party, Roger is also the life of the party. He's charming, he compliments the women and his host, and has so many witty lines. The stroke of eleven, an hour before midnight, what a splendid time to be visited by a ghost. Now this takes place after the events with Laura. And it's a party, so we can assume that Roger's drinking, even more than usual. So it does make sense that he's more open to the supernatural, but he still doesn't take it seriously. And he insists that they all have a seance because he thinks it'll be fun. And for the viewer, it certainly is. Could you have been touched by a ghost, Liz? We all know the legends of Collinwood. The ghosts from the past have come back to haunt this house. What if one of them's trying to contact you? I think we should meet it halfway. I think we should have a seance. It won't harm us and it might be fun. Now concentrate on establishing communication. Who is here with us? Who is in the room? Who is trying to communicate with us? Is it you, Joshua? Naomi? Millicent? Josette? We're waiting for you to contact us. We're waiting. Speak to us. At the first sign of trouble, Roger chickens out and wants to call it off. But it's too late. Victoria Winters is already in a trance. Louis Edmonds and Joan Bennett are not just actors on Dark Shadows. Just as much as Collinwood itself, they are part of the backbone of the show. 
Dressing up as a Collins family ancestor for a party is a classic Dark Shadows idea that was repeated in both House of Dark Shadows and the 1991 revival series. And the Collins family have seances like the Bradys have potato sack races. It's an unforgettable moment in Dark Shadows history, and it wouldn't exist and wouldn't feel right without the man of the house in Collinwood, Roger Collins. While most of the publicity went to the spooky characters like Barnabas and Quentin, when you rewatch Dark Shadows as an adult, you really appreciate how much Louis Edmonds brought to the show. And as cold and unfeeling as Roger Collins could be, was how warm and enchanting Louis Edmonds was with his fans. After Dark Shadows, he went on to play Langley in All My Children, and was nominated for three Daytime Emmy Awards. But for Dark Shadows fans, he will always be Roger Collins. And he remained close friends with Joan Bennett and Jonathan Frid. At Dark Shadows conventions, he would entertain his fans with his cabaret act, sometimes against doctor's orders. And with his biography, he was one of the first Dark Shadows actors to publicly come out as gay, serving as an inspiration for many of the LGBT members of the Dark Shadows fandom. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your 10 brandies and your look at the top 5 Roger Collins episodes. Oh bravo, encore! Sarah Bernhardt could take lessons, a brilliant performance!